guys. Welcome to season three, episode one of the Beers, Bourbon, Whiskey podcast, man. You already know who it is. It's your boy Q Lewis holding it down live from the 48205. I got my man Bo in the building. What's up? Man, we back, dog. I'm excited and shit because uh, not only are we back, for the third time. It's season three, dog. That's crazy, right? That's what's up, man. For sure. If y'all been following us on eblockradio.com, then you know that we've been through two seasons already. And uh, last season, uh, we ended in, Lu- in Louisville. In Louisville. Louisville. <laughs> the bourbon <laughs> capital. Uh, with uh, Rowan's Creek. Yeah. Uh, that, was that whiskey or bourbon? It was bourbon. That's bourbon. Yeah. All right, so Rowan's Creek. Uh, bourbon, that was our last show in Louisville. And we, we got to go back, though. Yeah, we got to go back. Man, I wish it was... Uh, I wish the derby had really happened. Like yeah, it, it happened, but yeah. you know, um, you gotta get ready for the derby though. You gotta be. Yeah, that's what man, I heard. You I want to suited and booted, boy. For I want to go next year though. So that's definitely on the list. Uh, shout out to all my uh, Louisville people <laughs> in Louisville, um, especially yeah. at uh, Cole's place. <laughs> shout out to Cole's place, bro. Shout shout out to Cole's place, shout out to Cole's place for real and uh, exclusive. Exclusive. That was yeah. thirty five dollars to get in, so yeah. not really a shout out to them. Yeah, not yeah. <laughs> thoroughbred. Never mind. Yeah, never mind. Never Fuck mind. it. Yeah, just Cole's <laughs> place. Mind. It's Cole's place. Shout out to the niggas that let me live with all that blue on. <laughs> hey, Cole's place. I thank y'all yes. for not trying to bust my motherfucking head. all y'all had on red hats. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> thank y'all for not trying to bust my head, dog. Man. But we back, man, with a local, uh, with some local joints, man. We at the Detroit City Distillery. If you're not hip to Detroit City Distillery, uh, it's located down in, uh, I was about to say Hard Plaza. <laughs> Down in uh, Eastern Market. Eastern Market. Mm-hmm. Duh, why I couldn't get that together? <laughs> we haven't even started drinking yet. But uh, yeah, so it's down in Eastern Market. This is uh, obviously in Detroit, Detroit mm-hmm. City Distillery. And today we got the uh, Butcher's Cut Bourbon. All right, mm-hmm. so they do have another bourbon, which is a rye. Um, I haven't had yet. Um, but So we got the Butcher's Cut. And we were actually uh, lucky enough to already have some because we went to an event uh, down at Detroit City uh, Brewer, uh, uh, Distillery. Distillery. Mm-hmm. Uh, for their six-year anniversary. Right. Uh, so, shout out to uh, Michael Forsyth, mm. uh, which is one of the uh, master distillers. And, uh, man, what was his man's name? Oh, man. He said that he had a nickname. He did. Cool as hell, though. Yeah, I forget his name. But though. he the one who got us fucked up. Yeah, yeah. yes. He yes. broke out something that I think he said was 120-something proof. It's something that they, they hadn't bottled yeah, yet. Yeah, I can't remember what it was, but yeah, for sure. Bruh. Got us Woo. all the way together, dog. Shout out to them, dog. When my old cats used to say it was all the way zooted, for real. <laughs> zooted. <laughs> zooted. All the way zooted, dog. <laughs> so we back in here to talk about this, and uh, we've actually had it already, but we go, uh, you know, get y'all hip to it. Um, if you're not from the Detroit area, I heard that, uh, you know, they've been doing some traveling, so people in Chicago may have mm-hmm. heard of this already. Uh, they said it's pretty much a hit down there. So uh, Kentucky, we got something for your ass right now. That's what's up. Detroit bourbon. On the move, baby. You know what I'm saying? We on the move and shit. Yeah. Shout out to Bro Brothers. We on your ass. <laughs> Not quite, though. The only thing is, it's good, but it ain't yeah. Bro Brothers. It's good. Nah. <laughs> Speaking of which, we got to gotta get somewhere to get some more of that shit. Yeah. Everywhere yeah. is like sold out. Pretty I mean, much. Everywhere is sold out. Or... Bro, we was in Kentucky. And yeah. Couldn't find, couldn't find it. it. <laughs> like, and that's where the shit is from. Yeah. That's crazy. So Detroit City Distillery, dog. Um, six year anniversary, obviously. So it's been around for six years. Interesting story uh, that we got directly from one of the master distillers uh, is that now Michael is not the master distiller that's uh, that's talked about in this uh, on this bottle. So it's called Butcher's Cut, right? Because apparently, <laughs> like somebody who was distilling the uh, the bourbon, like cut their finger off, right? So <laughs> that's why it's called Butcher's Cut. So it's actually one of the uh, one of the other master distillers, like it's his grandfather or some shit, mm-hmm. and that's where they came up with the name. So make sure you check out that backstory, uh, Butcher's Cut Bourbon Whiskey from a uh, Detroit City Distillery. Uh, a little interesting fact there, definitely, um, for sure. And it, it uh, damn, I almost want to get into it, but we might as well just bust it open. For you might as well just bust it open. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to start talking about this shit, and you know our ritual. Oh if yeah. You, if you haven't seen season one and two, then you know we got to uh, spank the bottom of the of the uh, bottle because. For some reason, we think that it stops you from getting sick. It doesn't really, though. Because if you <laughs> drink too much, you go probably throw up. <laughs> I think that's going to happen anyway. But now, uh, Detroit City Distillery also has uh, vodkas and... I think it's just vodkas yeah. and whiskeys, I think. I think, they, I think they make a gin, don't they? Maybe they don't oh, make he, a gin. Is it a gin? I know they make vodka. It vodkas. sound like he said something about gin. I though. thought he said something about gin, but mm. I could be wrong. I can't remember. I'm having a hard time remembering. I do know one thing, though. Mm-hmm. I had a lot of liquor when I was there. Oh, my goodness. 
Drank yeah. a whole hell of a lot. I, was, I, I, you know what? I didn't even grab a burger either from uh, uh Cutters. Um, from Cutters. Yeah, shout out to Cutters. Yeah, shout out to uh, Cutters. Most depth, which, which is back open now. I see. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, because they bur- they burgers on point. <laughs> the they burgers, burgers on point. Um, but they was ten dollars. I wasn't gonna bring that up, but yeah, they was ten dollars. Was ten dollars, and I get it. I mean, you, you know, yeah. they was good. Like they probably good. But um, probably obviously not the same grill that they're using inside. I mean, to keep it real though, if we was to go to like a Chili's or a Red Robin or an Applebee's. We're gonna pay ten dollars for a burger. You know? Oh no, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm paying ten dollars for a Cutters burger, but like the Cutters that they make yeah, inside. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, this is a barbecue pit. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I got you. Damn, it's I still. got greedy as hell. You see that? Yeah, shit? yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I knew, cause I knew what it tastes like already. <laughs> <laughs> we skipped the whole shit. I wasn't even. I, I just try to play it off. You know, no, I'm just like, <laughs> all, right, all right, yeah. All right, so let's uh, <laughs> let's talk about the nose, right? So the the beginning is that that's, the nose. What, I, that's what I always say. So you always clear the nose, it up. the palate, and the finish. Got you. So what you say about the nose, dog? Uh, oh, you know. Let me tell you one thing for sure. I love this bourbon, and it's definitely not sweet. So it's not sweet like what I normally like. So you'd probably be surprised that I actually like this one. Mm-hmm. But it's definitely not sweet. It's it's uh so the nose I get like a uh I think the first thing get a a little bit of citrus, you know, but I also get like some spice. I, you know, you, you like you typically taste spice, right? But mm-hmm. I can almost like you know how when you smell something spicy, spicy like, yeah. yeah, you know. I kind of get that hint from it, you know. Uh, you can definitely smell, uh, smell the uh, spice for sure. And I think a little cedar too, possibly. And you, can, you can taste it at the end. Yeah. Well, I think it's the cedar that you taste at the end. So, a little uh, bit of cedar yeah. and, uh, and spice. It's not a... It's weird, though. Because I honestly, this is this goes against everything that I like for real. <laughs> yeah, you I, like I, like, that. I like sweet shit. Oh, crown peach over here. <laughs> I don't like crown peach. Crown vanilla... Maybe so, but not not whatever though. Anyway, I like the I, I like the more the I don't want to say bitter, but I like the stuff that has the more spicy side, the yeah. more like earthy, yeah. you know, cedar type types, you right. know, type bourbons. I guess I got you. Well, you know, I mean, obviously, all all bourbon bourbons they're they're a little sweeter than most liquors anyway, yeah. right? You know, but uh, and then just some of those are just sweeter than others. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. sure. Because like uh, just like with Bro Brothers, it's definitely um a lot more uh like caramel in it for sure um for sure. so that 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 taste is what i like and i think that's why i, I kind of geared towards them surprisingly though like i said this don't have no kind of like i don't taste nothing like that no kind of caramel maybe like some bitter cocoa but not like the sweet cocoa no, you know what i'm saying yeah. i don't even know it's I, nothing I, it's I, like I, woods and spice <laughs> woods and spice dog yeah and, and a, couple yeah, a, <laughs> a couple of little fruits a couple little fruits and shit yeah you know what i'm saying <laughs> But uh, surprisingly, though, it's, it's pretty good. And um, in case you didn't know, we're we're recording this pretty early, so I'll be drunk before uh, the sun go down. It's fine. It is after do- noon. I won't tell you exactly, exactly what, time what time it is, it is but, but it is after noon, okay? Barely. <laughs> <laughs> right. But um, <laughs> what's cool about uh, what's cool about this whole thing, like I said, is a backstory. Um, that the ingredients or like, I guess they were originally distilling like pretty much everything up in, where is, where is that? Near Lansing. Yeah, right? Bath. Yeah, in Bath, uh, Michigan. And like, this is where, like, this is where it came from. So this is really homegrown. Um, what I do like about Detroit City Distillery though, is that it's like really, it's really a part of the city. Like when you, when you visit there and then you talk to the people that work there, um, it, it brings, I ain't gonna lie, it give me some it give me some hope for the city though. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. It, it kinda gives you some hope for the city. And and this is a this is a city that's on the rebound. Um I know that a lot of people who live here, including myself, have said it before about, you know, how everything is working downtown, but on the outskirts mm-hmm. it's not really. Um, I think that may be the case, but I think there's opportunities for us to like take advantage of that of this growth because this is one of the places where I think we, we should be in the forefront, especially for other communities that's black like ours. Um, we should be in a, I ain't go like, like a leader, like people should be looking to us to see how to assemble their cities. That's majority black. Yeah, I got you. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Because yeah. we, we got the resources, we got the people here at this point, we just need to become like industry leaders and whatever that might be. And I think here, especially after the, the falling of the, uh, the auto industry, um, there's a, a, a gang more of entrepreneurs. So I think here now is probably like one of the places where I've seen the highest population of entrepreneurs. Like, people are trying to figure out other ways to get income. 
because it's like so many families, so many generations was built on the auto industry. Now it's like since that's going away, like you had to do something different. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of entrepreneurs here. So shout out to Detroit City Distillery, um, who making a hell of a good bourbon and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. It's yeah, definitely pretty good for sure. But um, yeah. just thinking about that shit, just like like I said, we learned the story about uh, butchers cutting where that came from, and just about learning, right? So. Again, off camera, we was talking about uh, just that. We were talking about learning and uh, higher learning, to, <laughs> to be exact. And uh, real quick, too, while we're on the subject, I do want to shout out uh, The Loft, which is in Farmington, Michigan. Uh, this is a black-owned cigar bar. Uh, shout out to Monique. Monique, I can't remember your na- your last name right now, but Monique, I'm giving you a shout out right now. Um, but, yeah, shout out to them. And I had a double shot of Butcher's Cut bourbon while I was there, and I had uh, the Emperor's Cut Cigar that you told me mm-hmm. about on last season, mm-hmm. uh, which is another black-owned cigar uh, company. Mm-hmm. Um, Boy, smooth, wasn't it? Dog, smooth. Yeah. And it smoked long, too. Though. Yeah, it does. It smoked yeah. long, yeah. So I, I like that yeah. shit. It was, it was dope. I'm definitely, like, on the strength, I'm thinking about buying a box. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, that's yeah, what's I'm thinking up. about yeah. buying a box, for sure. Yeah. That and uh, Romeo and Juliet, you know, I can't <laughs> never get away from those. But, yeah, so while we were there, while we were there at the loft, we started having this conversation about education, mm. which is kind of what we're talking about today. Um, and <laughs> I was cracking jokes. Now, obviously, we all sitting there, we all had college degrees, uh, angry principal, and, uh, and my man G, like, they got, like, PhDs and all kind of other shit, you know, I got a bachelor's, <laughs> but still, we all got, you know what I'm saying, we all got degrees, but I'm, I'm the one, like, um, I don't really like education. So, I guess what we want to talk about today is, like, for, for especially for black people, and I know people say that education is important, but like, how important is a classical, like, higher education, like, you know, a, a, a college or, I won't, I won't say trade school because I think that's a little bit different. So, like, mm-hmm. as far as college, like, how important is college really, like, for Black people? I think it, I think it depends. You know, I, we we briefly talked about this before. I think yeah. it depends really on the field you go into, right? Yeah. Um, if you're going to some type of medicine or some type of you know very technical field or whatever. Obviously, I think, you know, that higher education <laughs> yeah. is important, right? Because yeah. if you're working on my body, I'm going to want to know that you went through all that, right? You need to be you in the phase 6 dissertation. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Uh, but, like, someone like myself, you know, like, I was a business major in undergrad, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's pretty broad. I can, you know, pretty much go into anything. Like, yeah, I, I do work in that particular field, so to speak. Yeah. But, I mean... There's nothing special that I learned from my undergrad that I couldn't learn from going to Google. To tell the truth. <laughs> right. You know YouTube, what I mean? Right. Yeah, it's on the YouTube. Too, yeah, you sure. know? Yeah. Uh, the college experience, you know, obviously, that's different. I think I think you can have to separate. Like, I think Angry Man was talking about that. You have to separate that from the education part, right? No it's, doubt. Yeah. I believe because the college experience, that's just... That's what it is. Yeah, that's what and it is. And what right? you make it. Yeah, and yeah definitely. Make. Definitely. But the education part... Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think, you know, that's attainable elsewhere. For you sure. know, yeah, if it's not a very technical field or, you know, medical field, you know, field of law or something, yeah. I don't really, th- I, th- <laughs> I, I think the completion of it is what's important to employers anyway, right? For they sure. just want to know you have a degree. Oh, you got a degree? Okay. Yeah. They know you went through you stuck, X, Y, and Z. You stuck through it. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. I mean, with, with that too, though, because uh, this is an interesting question, I think. So let, let me just uh, comment on that. Of course... Fuck school. <laughs> I knew it was coming sooner. All right, so now, all right, so now, what what I really mean though, seriously, is that um, I think we obviously mentioned this before, but having a like having a real plan on how to how to fund it, like how to pay for it, and having a real plan about you know your 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 goals after the fact, or whatever your professional your professional goals are after the fact, because mm-hmm. a lot of times whatever your professional goal is after the fact should kind of determine whether you want to waste that time in school or not. Because, like, some things, like you said, I think are attainable. So, And I don't mean waste your time, but, I mean, you really have to prioritize that shit and, and know you got to have a plan. Mm-hmm. Just like when people go to the, uh, you know, into the armed forces, I say the same thing. Like, if you go without a plan, you know, they go work your ass. Like, because they got a plan for you. You need to have a plan for yourself. Just like the schools. Like, the schools got a plan for you, shit. Fill these seats, get their tax dollars and shit, and Send shit. your ass to prison. <laughs> With a prison pipeline. That's what we doing right now. That's not the topic. That's what we doing right now. That's another topic. <laughs> ain't no, that's, that's another topic. Though. That's another topic. But but those are facts too. But yeah. but uh but yeah. So like you got to have a plan, or the or the system would definitely have a plan for you. That's all I mean by that. 
Um, so is it important? Uh, I don't. I can't really say that the the paper or the school um, knowledge is important. I mean, the the discipline of learning research and learning how this probably gonna sound crazy, but learning how to learn, <laughs> I think, is important. So like, if you get that, cause I told people like I was I was terrible at school, right? So when I first got out of school, I think I had a uh, when I took my ACT, I want to say I had like a sixteen. Like nobody would take me because I was retarded. So uh, Eastern was like, you know what? We take anybody with a pulse. If you get a 17, we'll take you and shit. So I retook it and like got an 18 and shit. I was super excited, but I seen that smart people was getting like 21s and shit, but whatever. So I get to uh, <laughs> I get to school like with no plan. Like I kind of went because like I didn't want to not go. Like my sister, I went. Nobody had been to college before her. So it was like she set the standard like, damn, now I got to go. So I went without no plan. I think that's kind of what fucked me up. But also what I tell people too is that I'm a horrible note taker. <laughs> like people think that that's like a, not a thing. Like <clears throat> note taking is a skill. Like if you ain't noticing that, they actually had note taking classes. Like, cause this is really a thing. If you can't take good notes, you not go do well in the school though. And that's, I mean, that's just a simple fact. And I can't take good notes. Like I'm in, I'm in class and I'm taking some dog ass notes. I get to the crib like, hell yeah. What I learned today was, what the fuck is this? Like, well, what am I doing? So like, if you don't have, you, like, you got to have, like, some for real focus. And that's the one thing I talked about on my other show the other day. was talking about uh, what you would do differently at, at 20 or whatever. And the thing that I said on the show was this, because my perspective completely changed, is that I would have definitely reconsidered going to a black college. <laughs> like, I didn't, because at 20, <clears throat> I remember going to Atlanta, and a couple of my homies uh, <laughs> was in black colleges, and I was, I was amazed at, like, what campus looked like and what the women looked like. And just the environment. And I just felt like from that point, I understood that I wasn't necessarily that great at school or I had never really focused myself in school. So I felt like that environment was going to you know, derail me and I was okay. going to end up losing track of everything. I got older and I looked at the perspective different, which is what Angry Principal was trying to tell me in the first place, was that what you got to look at is... It's going to naturally evolve like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that they are all there that look like you, so That's they are more willing system. to help. That's yep. your support system. No, I never looked at it like that. Never, but now I'm looking at it like, damn, I should have went because if I was falling off, then I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a professor like my man had on higher learning and shit. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> Mr. Williams? No, right? <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> to get me in line and shit, because you go to these PWIs and shit, and they, you know, you might get lucky. Like I got lucky. Like I got lucky with my uh, journalism professor, who was also the uh, you know the chairman yeah. of the uh, journalism department. So I got lucky. Cause like he was an old white dude and shit. Funny as hell. Remind me of Wes Craven and shit. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, nigga, look like Wes Craven. He do. He do. Yeah, <laughs> he do. But dog, from from like the backwoods of Iowa somewhere, and just like for whatever reason, like he fucked with me. Like he really, he saw my vision and he, and he helped me. Like like that's I ain't gonna lie. Like him, I, I think yeah, I would just say him. There's some couple of little teachers in high school that probably that got me together with writing, but. Like him, like really got my confidence in writing though. Like I, that shit was crazy. So shout out, shout out to uh, Dr. Renner. You know what I'm saying? That was my uh, journalism professor back in the day. Though yeah, got me on straight. But yeah, if I'd have went to a black college, then you know what? Maybe even then, if I'd have went to a black college, maybe I would take that education a little more. Maybe I wouldn't be like I am about it. It could maybe. be. It could be. Know. Maybe. Yeah. Possibly. Uh, possibly. I don't know. And then somebody told me though, it's probably more about the money. The fact that I came out of so many motherfucking thousands for this shit. I mean, that's obviously going to leave anybody really salty about the situation, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm still pissed that, like, we, it's, it's, you know, education has been monetized like it has at so many mm-hmm. different levels, whether that's preschool through whatever. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Right. Like, some of these preschools, like, you paying for this kid to go to Harvard, you know, out here, right? And I hear about... <laughs> Like some of my friends with kids and whatnot, yeah. they talk. I'm like, dog, what? Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. I'm like, Mrs. Jordan from down the street used to keep me. And shit, you know, yeah. I turned out okay. You know, it's, but it's a daddy yeah. babysitting. Yeah, that's exactly. That's all it is. Yeah. Education. Now, do we put this? Probably. I don't. Damn, I don't want to sound all ignorant and shit. But do we put too big of a, a emphasis on education? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. Uh, Education is very, very, very important. Yeah. Um, I think, I think we, I think we, we, we put a, a lot of that onus on like how do, how does the the, the black community or whatever become successful, right? Mm-hmm. And and I think when we were growing up, it was 
you know, education was pushed a lot. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of us made made an effort, even that got us into a lot of debt to go to college <laughs> right. because right. that's what we were taught. That's what we were told. Yeah. And I'm glad to see now, like, yeah, you know, education, I, I don't think it's ever bad, you know, if, if it doesn't put yeah. you in, in thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. Um, but I'm, I'm glad to see now the younger generation is like you mentioned earlier, it's more about the entrepreneurial, uh, uh, you know, uh, enterprises and whatnot. For sure. Right. Cause at the end of the day, man, I don't care how much education you have, how awesome your degree is, you know, I always come back to this, like I am busting my ass to make, to make somebody else rich. Right. Like, <laughs> yes. and, and, and when you have your little performance appraisals and your one-on-ones and stuff, and it's like, yeah, how do I get to this next promotion? Well, you know, if you do this, 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 and this, mm. like, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm gonna bust my ass and all this stuff for a little 8%, right. you know, 9% raise. So I might get a little bonus or whatever that you, you know, mm. Uncle Sam will tax the fuck out of that. He didn't have exactly. any, you know, yeah, exactly. he didn't work for it at all. And, uh, you know, it's just like, damn, like, Man. You ask yourself, you know, I, I think you ask yourself eventually, like, what, what, the what fuck? am I working for? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Other that's... than just to try to get some money, you know. Yeah. Like, I, I think it's a little deeper for that for our younger generation now, yeah. right? So, which they're I am really glad to, to see. They're really trying to find purpose. Yeah, they're trying to find some purpose. They're trying to, yeah. you know, help the community, things like that, yeah. and, and and that's dope. Um, I, I I tell my niece all the time, like, she didn't want to tell me. Oh yeah, I remember. yeah. She didn't want to tell me that. She stopped going to traditional college and started going to like a uh, uh, like a healthcare, you know, like nurses aid, LPN, whatever that type, mm. CNA, whatever they call it, right. you know, uh, uh, you know, school for training and whatnot. And I was like, that's dope. I'm like, I don't mm. see why you. I mean, you, you are learning a skill and a trade that you can put to work right, right away, now. Right, right now, and mm. make some money and not go into. Tens of thousand dollars of, of debt for it, and see like, that's the, that's the thing. Just like and is you always have a job and there's growth, right? Always, always, always. Because like you can you can work your way through, and then if you if you don't want to do it no more, you can be a private practitioner. Yeah, without yeah. being a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Exactly. Yeah, right? and that's <laughs> that's the thing. Just like what we was talking about with the uh, black colleges, it's about perspective though. Just like her <clears> perspective <throat> was just like, damn. If I don't go to this four year college, they gonna mm-hmm. look at me like I failed, and that's not Mm-mm. really the thing. Like you know what? Back in the day. That's back how you day, and I grew so. up, I think. Yeah, yeah back in know? the day, maybe so. Just like... um, well, like Even I, before that, so, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. And just like I hear my old man say this shit sometimes and I laugh because I, I know that the, the tides are changing. Like, when when I have, like, friends or, like, my relatives, especially the younger ones, like my nephews and shit, when I mention mm-hmm. something about, like, you know, somebody quitting a job and, you know, trying to do this, trying to do that, mm-hmm. it's like all hell break loose because he from a generation is like, you don't quit no job. Mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck how bad they doing you. Like, whatever, like, your dream's just on hold, bro. You got to punch this clock. And I'm just, I'll be laughing because I'm like, yeah, dog. Mm-hmm. It just, it ain't that mm-hmm. no more. It's not, not no that. More. Because, and it can't be that. If you if you telling me that education is going to, like, unlock all these doors for me, then if I'm doing that, why should I still be grinding this 9 to 5, like, punching the clock? What was the point of telling mm-hmm. me that then? Because cause you didn't do this. Like, you didn't go to school and all that shit. You telling me it's important. So if I do that... Why am I still doing the same things you're doing? That don't make sense, right? It does. So if that was the case, why was it important then? Mm-hmm. So, like, you going to tell me I got to go get $60,000 in debt so I can punch a clock just like you did? Like, no, nah, this it don't make sense. Like, so what was the point of doing that shit? So it's a perspective. Like, because we looking at it now, like, hell no. Nah, take that take that shorter time, less money to get a for show career advancement and shit. Mm-hmm. You know, older people looking at it like, oh, you going to quit school? Like, it's not quitting school. That's doing some other school. Just like trade school. Do that shit. Yeah. Go be a carpenter. Go fix some motherfuckers. Be a welder. Hell yeah. Shit, because when that AC go out, boy, them motherfuckers charge you all kind of money. Hell yeah. (laughs) Go be a mechanic that just charged me $2,300 for my, to fix my Explorer. Oh, for real? Damn. Damn. Anyway. (laughs) Right. Right after the warranty go out. (laughs) Of course. That's how that shit always works. Like four months later. And shout out to uh, Corporate Cody. We uh, had a conversation real quick yesterday, too, about uh, IT. And Mm -hmm. I think that's probably... IT and, and cybersecurity is probably going to be, like, the number one thing only because... Oh, it already is. Yeah, because everything is so remote. Mm-hmm. So, like, you got to have it. So... Like, you got to have it. I, I'm not going to tell you guys what organization, <laughs> but I work in talent acquisition right now, mm-hmm. all right? And, yeah, I would say a good 25% of our operations is recruiting, you know, folks in the technical fields. Yeah. 
And I tell you what, man, like if you talented in the technical fields right now, like, you know, software engineer, you know, yeah. data architect, you know, program manager, things like that. About to get that bread. You about to get that bread for real. <laughs> and like that's dope. But what was really dope about that though, mm. everybody needs that right now. So they're competing over you. Yeah. So you can sit back, take your time, examine it, and pick the offers that you want. Thought you know? every everybody needs. You. Man, it's crazy. From the schools to the businesses, because everybody remote. Mm-hmm. And this shit this shit be failing. And then our business is starting to see. Yeah. Wait a minute. We can spend less money on site. And had these cats work from home and mm-hmm. just got to put some more money into our infra- technical infrastructure. To like, make sure the shit Yeah, <laughs> they're starting to figure it out now, right? Yeah, and yeah. It's, it's relating to bottom line, which, you know, that's when the C-suite starts to respond when it comes to that bottom right, line. That's what right? it's always been. Like, especially when, you know, I've been doing social media for a while in corporate America. And uh, I guess I'm, I'm done with them, so I guess I can say. <laughs> it's at uh, Comcast and uh, General Motors. And, like, a lot of the social media groups were you know hella small like mm-hmm. when i was in uh when i was in colorado doing social media for comcast it was uh when i first got there it was nine people i think mm-hmm. when i left it might have been might have been 15 mm-hmm. so like you keeping the lights on <laughs> and all this shit mm-hmm. for, for 12 people you know for what some saying? work that can be done at home anyway it, no because eventually what happened was uh they started cutting a little bit so when i was working afternoons Anybody who came in after 10 worked from home, like, the whole time. Mm-hmm. So you only came to work if you, you know, worked that 8 that eight o'clock shift or that 10 o'clock shift. If you worked anything after that, like, the afternoon or midnight, it mm-hmm. was at the crib. And I'm just, like, I'm thinking, like, we ain't have to come in here at all. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you, you really wasting money. And the only reason that they was even able to uh, do that is because uh, they had a Comcast building down there who had, the you know, the actual cars and the people on the phones. Mm-hmm. But, like, I guess it wasn't enough room for us. So, we ended up, like, basically they leased out a spot in the Wells Fargo building. So, like, they was leasing from somebody else. That's the only reason they was like, uh, oh, we can't mm-hmm. do this. But I, I figure if we was all in the call center, they didn't make niggas come to work mm-hmm. all day, you know, every day. But, like, I, I think that same perspective should have just been used. Like, save the money. Let us stay at the crib. Like, I... We paying for our own internet. Like you ain't that mean you ain't gotta pay for the internet at the place. You ain't gotta keep the lights on. Like obviously it seems like it makes sense. And then you can pay me another couple of dollars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you wanna spend it, then spend it on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Give me a little four, five dollar raise real quick. Yeah, they ain't trying to do that shit though. But back on the education shit, dog. So this is the thing. When we was at the loft, we was having this conversation. I presented this question and I, I mentioned it to you off air though. Um and people who listening right now, if you're checking out the uh, if you're checking out the podcast right now, hit me in a hit me in the uh, in the little comment section too, because I, I really want to know the answer to this for any college graduates though in real life. If you had the opportunity to return your college degree for a full refund, so everything that you owe, however much in fees and that, books and everything, oh, we can't get the books back because you can't prove it because <laughs> you got receipts and mm-hmm. shit. But all the fees, all the shit that's all the shit that you paying back. Like, would you return that motherfucker for a refund, dog? Would yes. you return that shit? Yes. Damn, you didn't even hesitate. <laughs> yeah, come on. My, my, I, think, I, I think about it, right? My undergrad yeah. degree, like, what really did, did, did it, how did it, how did it put me ahead in the game, really, right? You know, yeah. I'm thinking about it, and I'm looking at the ROI, the return on investment, <laughs> right? Right. And That business jargon. Yeah, you know, coming out, coming out of college, I look at, you know, I coached football for a while, right? Mm-hmm. Then I went to the Army. I didn't really get those serious job offers until I got that Army experience, you know, mm-hmm. as an officer, you know, on my resume. Mm-hmm. Even when that little bullshit-ass bachelor's degree cast is like, oh, man, you, people like you, now, a dime a dozen. Now, you know? granted, was it easier to become an officer because of school? Well, you have to have a degree or short progress towards a degree, degree uh-huh. to become an officer, period. Okay, unless unless you're direct commission, right? Gotcha, okay. So, I mean, there, there's already that. So, y- yes, that opened the door for me. I will say that, right? So, that might help. Yeah, so, from, from that standpoint, yeah. But mm-hmm. even, like, if you weren't an officer in the military and you were a non-commissioned officer, you know, an NCO or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, you're still going to have some... A pretty damn good resume. That experience time, you know, get you yeah. a better job. Yeah, that, yeah, that's gonna put okay. you ahead a little bit, right? Yeah. So I mean, and, and yeah, I have a master's degree and stuff like that. Yeah, that opens some doors for me and whatnot. Like even more so, obviously, than my bachelor's degree, right? Yeah. Um, but if I had the option right now to go back <laughs> and turn in that bachelor's degree and get a full cash like refund, I would. I do it. All that shit up. Yeah. <laughs> Cash right. refund though. I don't want no credits. I don't want no, 
I'm going to cash in my store head. Credit and shit. <laughs> no, no store credit. No. No, I feel, I feel you on that shit, though. And, I mean, obviously, you already know my answer. Anybody who's ever talked to me <laughs> know my answer, but I'll tell you anyway. Uh, hell, fuck yeah. I mean, expediently. I will probably, at this point, I will return that shit for 50%. Like, I, you ain't got to give me the whole thing. I'll take 50% right now. Only because, like, uh, again, you know, this whole writing and uh, kind of media thing I've been doing, I, but because everything has moved away from print and, like, traditional shit, I mean, back in the day, yeah, it made sense because, like, you had to have a degree to write for mm. such and such, you know, things like that. But now, with all these open avenues, it seemed like if I'd have known that, Information technology was gonna to come to this. I thought I could be an influencer or write about a blog Bro, and make what? millions or whatever thousand. Bro, what? Yeah, yeah. I'll ever have mm-hmm. now. What if I'd have known that instead of trying to get my foot in the door at you know New York Times or some shit like that, I could just create my own publication? Like if I'd have known that, mm-hmm. I'd have never did all this. Yeah, yeah. I'd have never, <laughs> I'd have never went to school. I'd have figured out how to do all this stuff on my own, which is what make a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business owners. Which makes them like so powerful, you know, the ones that that did succeed. That's what made them so powerful because they had that perception. They was like, you know what, I'm just gonna make my own, and that's a and that's a scary thing to do, though. It is it's a scary thing to do because like it's that potential to fail. And I know that that whole idea. And see, this is where this is where I, I kind of changed my perspe- uh, perception and perspective, I guess. Uh, on this was uh, with corporate America. That used to be my thing. It's like, all right, corporate America is a machine. Corporate is a machine. So it's like. Is uh it's reliable. I can go. I can get this paycheck. I can get this health insurance. But then, it, but then, this happened. Like America happened. So corporate is not safe. They can they can chain the doors on that mug just as quick as you can lose your LLC. You know what I'm saying? So just because it, it seems to be like something that's that's gonna always be there and you can always count on it, corporate America is not that anymore. I think it's too many stakeholders and everything. So. Shit fall apart, and your job cannot be your job next week. You see the pandemic. You see what happened. Like, people lost their jobs, and shit that they thought was going to be concrete forever, they no longer had it. So I think that perspective made it a little easier to kind of look at, you know, entrepreneurship because it's like it's all a risk at this point. It ain't the time where you could go to – like, at this point, you can't work a job for 30 years. Them days is over, bro. Like, it's, it's no job that you can keep for 30 years. You can keep – you can keep the same position for 30 years, like at different places, but like at one job, I don't see how you can, unless you're a nurse or, you know, doing something in the, uh, in the medical field. But even then they switch in hospitals. Like nobody's staying at the same place for 30 years. That whole concept is different. And that's why I think the education thing got to be different. That What's funny about that is that the climate of the world changed, the climate of corporate America changed, but the fucking, uh, <laughs> the school didn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it sound like you got something to say about that. Uh, a couple things. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I think just like cause, just because like the institution of you know school education or whatever, you know it ed- educating people employs people, right? Yeah. So you always have those folks that first of all they don't want to change or not innovative. They don't. They can't see around the corner. You know, it's right. just what it as is. So you have those folks that are in leadership positions, right? And a yeah. lot within education uh, or any field, really. Yeah. Um, you know, one one thing I I, I was kind of thinking about, and I, to to me, the whole degree thing, mm-hmm. you know that, that so within my organization, there's certain roles that you have to have a degree, you know, mm-hmm. to be considered, and certain roles you don't. And like I I I get that up to a certain point for some things, right? Mm-hmm. My question is this, right? Um, is that at all flexible with within some organizations, right? Because right. I've noticed some of the organizations that I've been part of in the past, some of the companies that I've worked for, things like that, mm-hmm. they typically are going to train you and, and, and give you some some tools to succeed in, in, in that role anyway, right? Regardless. Like, yeah, like yeah. this is how, you know, ABC Corporation does this, right? right? Like, yeah, it does help to have some type of formal education sometimes and things, so you're familiar with things, you can suggest things, you can kind of be innovative about some things and think around the corner. Like, I, I, I get that. Yeah. But for the most part anyway, you know, whether it's a role that needs a degree or doesn't, 
They got you know, trained. Yeah, they got to train, right? <laughs> right. So um, that. Yeah, you know, I mean, sort of being like a decision, like some of the decision-making roles, right? You know, like directors, senior managers, stuff like that, I, you know, yeah, VPs. Like, I, get that, I get that, right? Yeah. But just like a, a everyday manager, you know, yeah. supervisor, stuff like that, like what's really going to make them more effective, I guess, and better at their jobs is – People skills and that experience, you right, sure. right, and not uh, a college degree. Pe- people skills, you man. know, yeah, interpersonal <laughs> skills. What's what's this whole thing now? The servant leadership aspects and whatnot. The, you know? People skills is the underrated talent that people I, I think don't take seriously enough. The people skills, the don't you you got to understand, especially in leadership. People who are in leadership, dog, it's something you need to understand. If people can't relate to you. I don't give a shit if you're the best leader on earth. We were talking about that earlier, yeah. The best leader on earth. Look, I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> All right, this is this is probably a crazy analogy. But Adolf Hitler is a is a shitty person, though. A very shitty person. But how do you think he was able to lead all of those people into doing what he wanted them to do, though? Emotional intelligence. Dog, he personable than a motherfucker. Like, to them, he a good motherfucker, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, everything makes sense. I get it. The same way Trump is in office. I was about to say, you know what he same is? Same way Trump is he in is office. An, 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 he was an intelligent Trump. Yeah, basically. exactly. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> duh, for real, for real, dog. <laughs> so, I mean, when you look at it like that, people skills is something that you can't necessarily teach in a, in a classroom. But I guess you, you could learn. I think, well, you know what? You can learn people skills from the experience of school. So, let me ask you this, then. All right, so we talked about it. We kind of in agreement. Uh, and we go we go shut it down in a little while. We ain't go we ain't go run it too long, but uh, just to piggyback off the question I asked earlier, would you return that shit for a full <laughs> refund? Now let me ask you this though: Would you return that for a full refund, as well as the college experience? Like, would you get an experience of like somebody hit you with the man in black stick, like, and you just forget <laughs> all of that experience? No, like, would you get an experience of? I wouldn't. I yeah. wouldn't. Right? <laughs> because. Shit, this podcast is probably, you know, came about because of that experience. Because of that experience. Facts. We met in college. Facts. We was homies in college and whatnot, Facts. right? True. Um, so many so many people in my life, the people that, you know, that I considered the closest to me and whatnot, I met. Came from that era. From that era in college and whatnot, right? Mm-hmm. So good. the actual experience, no, I, I, I would not, man, because that's mm-hmm. kind of shaped me to who I am. And, For sure. You know, and, and put the people in my life that, you mm-hmm. know, um, that need to be there, you know well, what I mean? I wouldn't be there if it wasn't for that experience, exactly. No doubt. And, and that's what I said that before, too. I had a uh, shout out to my, my homeboy, Lil D, man. Um, one of the best, one of the, one of the best, or if not the best, uh, hooper in our neighborhood, uh, for real. Like, I'm talking about dog, dog had skills, but just could never do the school thing. Mm-hmm. So, like, it wasn't until 12th grade that he was eligible, dog. And when I tell you, he played for Kettering. And I tell you, dog, he in the paper every he in the paper every Friday. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Every Friday, cause he could hoop, mm-hmm. but could never do the school thing. So I knew, like I knew, because of all the conversations we had and and just how he could never be eligible <laughs> all through high school that school wasn't for him. Yeah. But I told him though, like at least like you doing well enough, like that somebody will bring you on just to hoop. And mm-hmm. I was just like, dog, in real life, even if school ain't for you, just go have a little semester experience. You know, get kicked out for academics or whatever, whatever. But, like, go have an experience. And he just never did any shit. And I, I think uh, I was pushing for that shit early on. You know what I'm saying? Because I had, at that at that point, I was in school. But now I'm thinking, like, maybe that ain't even the right thing to say. Like, maybe you shouldn't tell somebody to go to school just for the experience. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe maybe you got to be more practical. Like, dog, don't go unless you can pay for it. Period. Like, no matter what's going on and shit. I don't know what you think about that shit, though. Because, I, I I mean, I went hard in the paint, though. Like, I'm telling him, like, dog, you should just go hoop. Like, if it don't work out, nigga, just enjoy them four or five months. You know, all this little weak shit. Should we be telling people that shit? Or should you just really be practical? Like, dog, if you can't pay for it, don't go. I think um, I don't want to put a definitive on it, right? You know, so I, <laughs> right. I, I, I think I, yeah, right. I think it's a very fine line, man. Like, some cats, like, you know. They just may not be about the whole school thing, the experience, <laughs> nothing like that, right? Exactly. But then again, like some other, I, I'm not just gonna tell nobody just like don't go to school because of X, Y, and Z. Dude. You know, like yeah, be prepared for these things. Have you know some type of plan where you can mitigate those risk factors, right? But <laughs> I don't want to tell you nobody say mitigate those risk factors. I mean, yeah, that's what that's it is about. Mitig- definitely a corporate term. Oh, that's a military term. <laughs> oh, actually. that's what yeah, it is. Okay, yeah. I got you. But 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 definitely like. 
I don't want to tell anybody don't do that. I, I don't want to shut off any avenue to anyone, right? Gotcha. You know what I mean? Because like that's your life to live. Like no, I can give you some advice and what I think about the situation, but ultimately it's like your decision, right? True. So I don't think I would, unless it's like. Hey, I'm about to go live on the street corner and be a crack addict for the next five years or whatever, right? Yeah, let's not do that. Yeah, there's always extremes, you know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah. But for the most part, man, I'm not going to tell anybody not to do something with their life, right? You know? Yeah. You get some, you, that's what life's about. Sometimes you just got to figure that shit out on your own. Sometimes you got to do some yeah. some dumb shit to, to lead to better shit, right? Yeah. You know? and, it, and it's tough. It's tough to even have those conversations because every, like, I don't, yeah, I think I'm comfortable saying this. Every bad decision for you, not a bad decision for somebody else, though. You know right, what I'm saying? Like, right, right. Your decision is good for you, but don't mm-hmm. mean it's good for everybody else. And that's just about, and just looking back on that shit, though, I said that, and I kind of like, um, at first, like, when he didn't go and do that shit, I was just kind of like, I was kind of disappointed and shit. But then I'm like, as I got older, looking back on it, like, shit, like, he made a decision. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I kind of, how can I, like, I didn't envy that, but like, I kind of, I fuck with people who make decisions hey, like that. And, and who knows though? He could have got to a point where he was just done with who? Like no, that too. I'm done with it. That too. Done that, with that's it. definitely how nephew is. You know? That's how nephew is with, with hooping and shit. Like he mm. just got to a point where he was done with it. And I understand because I got to a point with football and I was done yeah. with it. Mm. When I was in college, like I was I was decent in high school. When I got to college, like I was decent. But then like I found something else. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like so when I started really writing and getting into this journalism thing, like I found something else. And that was like the first time. That I found something other than a sport to keep my, you know, to keep my focus. Mm-hmm. And I was like, damn, that shit felt weird though, because it's like, I the only thing like I did not like, I think I told y'all this probably before. Cause I quit camp twice and shit, right? The first time I quit, I came back. But uh, camp was a motherfucker back yeah, in camp, camp boy. That's back when that was back the three niggas, days and shit. Right, that's back before niggas was dying. So yeah, they, they, oh, wait, 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 niggas was dying. They, we we didn't have social media and shit like that. <laughs> no, that's what it was. That's what it was. Though. We didn't have social media. Niggas was dying at football camp. Yeah, niggas but, was dying still. <laughs> but um, yeah. So after I quit that second time, I was really done with it. <laughs> but um, but I told y'all this before. Like when I when I quit that second time, it was like it was because I had found something else. And like I understood at that, it was at that moment that I understood Barry Sanders. I'm like, <laughs> nigga, how could you be, you know, this this the best decorated, in the, world, the best yeah. in the world, and just quit. But, like, when the love gone, bro, like, it ain't nothing left for football. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when the love gone, it ain't nothing left. Like, dog, there's nothing else you Especially can be doing in his situation, right? Yeah. With this backwards-ass organization that ain't going to do shit right for me to get a ring and dog, shit. Dog, who know? has proven to be the people that they that he said they was. Right, exactly. Ever since. Ever since. Ha- have proven to be those. 20 years exactly, later. Exactly, dog. <laughs> that shit <laughs> crazy. But, yeah, when you lose the love for that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's over with. And I think that's the... That probably can be the same said for <laughs> for school shit. It, it, I will say this too: there are some people that 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 enjoy school, right? We were kind of having this conversation earlier, mm-hmm. you know. So, so I'm working towards my my PhD right now, right. right? I enjoy researching, I enjoy reading about shit, learning new shit, stuff like yeah. that, right? The part I don't enjoy, like we was talking about, like at that I'm PhD level, it, the writing is so freaking tech. Like, it's every <laughs> the Everything like you know, you you've got to damn near have that APA seventh edition manual right next to you as you're writing any type of you know. No, it's like, at that what, point it's like man, science. Yeah, it's yeah, like you got real. a formula. You know, like yeah, it's like science. It, it's for real classes. They break down. They break down writing this paper into classes. It's like whole classes for real. It's crazy. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> hella crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like I I enjoy school from that standpoint of researching and learning new things and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Where you can get into a topic and like, damn, this is interesting as fuck. Yeah. And just go off into all these different like it's like it's like getting lost on YouTube, going down the rabbit hole, yeah, right? You know, rabbit yeah, hole, you know, sure. we same thing, yeah, yeah, for sure. And it, then it, it's just like when people start to get their hands on it, and, and I understand, you know, like, uh, like scholarly, you know, peer review work and shit has got to be written to a certain standard. Like I, I get that shit, right? But when people start to get their hands on things, it doesn't become that. You lose what's pure about it, right? Yeah. It becomes more about the presentation, the how it looks, and mm-hmm. stuff like that, like rather than before. the content. You know, like like we said before, like you you got a formula that you got to stick to, but mm-hmm. then you got teachers who are subjective. Like those yeah. two can't mm-hmm. really happen. You right. can't be subjective if you got these concrete rules. Right. And, and you know, you know I always write about Black America, right? <laughs> so like I, I know they are I, uncomfortable. I never, as, <laughs> I never would have thought that shit. So I know they are uncomfortable as fuck. Like when they're reading my paper, because I, I, I don't hold shit back, right? Yeah. You know, like. 
yeah, this is fucked up about America and blah, 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 whatever. Damn, I ain't gonna lie, you know? dog. I want to read some of your papers. Dog. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I do want to read some of your papers. I dog. use, like, <laughs> you know, so you get to your discussion part or whatever, you know, your conclusion where, you know, not necessarily everything has to be. So, like, in, 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 in my review of literature, right, which is mm-hmm. a section of the paper, like everything is cited and all that perfect, right? Then you get down to the discussion part and all that thing, conclusion, where you necessarily don't have to, things aren't cited as stringently as they are earlier in the paper, right? right? And so I get down to that part where I really like, hey, man, still, what I'm really saying, saying mind, yeah, yeah saying like, on your mind. this shit is fucked up out here and blah, blah, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. So I typically get more comments and questions about, and that's the part that I enjoy, like that, that, that like dialogue. literally, yeah, that dialogue there. Dude. But like you said, when it gets real subjective where some professors get into it where it's like, oh, I personally disagree about what you're writing about, and I'm going to hold that against you yeah, when I'm grading this paper and shit. Yeah, that's that. fucked up. Right, because right, you, mm-hmm. you got me on the formula on this first mm-hmm. part, but then you get your feelings in the mm-hmm. other one. It can't, it can't be that. It's got to be one or the other. Right. And it's not supposed to be subjective at all at that level. Mm-hmm. I feel like in, when you're in undergrad, shit like that, some of that can happen. You can get subjective. But when you're talking about, you know, twenty, twelve to $20,000 PhD yeah. classes, you need to stick to these rules. Yeah, exactly, right. Because yep. <laughs> that's the reason we're here. Like, I, mm-hmm. I fucked around with the rules early on. But once you get to this level, oh, it's all, it, sh- it should be streamlined. Mm-hmm. It should be streamlined. And that's the and that's the thing, too, that worries me about, about education or classical education. You get to, like, let's say you get to a job interview and you got a couple of candidates got these same credentials, but then you got one who had a subjective teacher and one mm-hmm. who's by the rules. H- how do you know how that? How do you know? You exactly. don't know that, right? You know what right. I'm saying? So you got somebody with these same degrees, but shit, ideally, somebody kind of off. You and, know what I'm saying? Because they subjective. Yes. And let me say this, too. Just because you have a PhD or DBA or, a, or a, you know, a doctor of education degree or whatever it is, mm. doesn't mean you always fucking right. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> it doesn't mean that at all. You need to say that shit again right? for the people in the back. Right. <laughs> again, so so just because you have a PhD or a DBA or ED or whatever it is, yeah. does not mean you're always fucking right. Like, no, for real, for cause real. Because I run across those people all, all the time. I've earned my, you know, credentials and blah, blah. Maybe. Like, yeah, and, and kudos to you, but you're wrong it, about this. And it's you know? tough. It's right? tough, so I understand why you feel like you got like, this. I, yeah, I get it. Because it's tough. Yeah. And most people can't get through it. Like, but you are. And I'm one of them. I'm one of the people. I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm <laughs> not doing that kind of research. I'm not doing that kind of motherfucking, uh, you know, that kind of citation. Only mm-hmm. because I, I think at this point, and that's, and that's what's funny about my writing, though, is that, like, I learned how to write classically, but then I learned how to interject my voice. And once I was able to do that, I can't go back. Like, I can't go back to the rules. I write so far outside the rules, bro. Like, when... And, and I know that because I know how to edit. Like I understand, like I understand English language. Mm-hmm. I I understand linguistics. I I understand semantics. I understand but it's a certain all that audience you're trying to get exactly. to, right? Yeah. So it's like once you get to that point where I can write outside the the rules, I can't go back, mm-hmm. dog. Like I can't AP it. I can't I can't get everything streamlined. I'm not gonna cite it the way right. it's supposed to be. I just can't. You know what? I I just figured out. I got a problem with rules. <laughs> I just, of us do. Of us do. I just realized you know it. I just realized it by so, saying that. I read a very interesting article. Uh, I can't remember the author. It, it was and it was actually in the process of me doing a, doing research, research for a paper and shit, right? Mm-hmm. Where um, I think it was three different authors or whatever, right, to, to this particular paper, and they were exploring like the the, the notion that black people, you, you know, so there's a myth that black people commit more crimes than white folks and things like that, for right? Sure. And so the, this author, or these authors, this team of authors, you know, uh, that, from this paper, they were exploring, like, that, that myth, basically. Yeah. And they came down to, like, a, a theory that if this were to be true, mm. this is why black people do this, right? Yeah. Because if you look at history, United States history, really, or well, really history since, history. like, the slave trade, really, yeah. right? The rules have not worked out so well for black folks <laughs> over the course of history, at right? All. So at that's... All. You know, so th- so their theory was that's why that black people don't like rules, and they tend to try to bug the system a lot the because the rules have so never long. worked out for us ever. Damn, right? That's interesting. You know, question. so that, I mean, that, that was that was a good po- like. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, you know, we can't. Like yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. It was a good topic for like further research and shit, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, that, that's that's what I enjoy about researching, right? Those different viewpoints a that white, lead to questions about that. Yeah, a white professor's go that's gonna be hell. On oh reading. man, yeah. When yeah, they know what that shit about, like, oh shit. <laughs> I know 
if I was a white professor, mm-hmm. I would. And you know, speaking of speaking of uh, not white professors, but white people, um, I'm a uh, you know I, I do social media for a lot of different places, so I'm on social media a lot. Um, so I posted something the other day, and I thought about it before I posted, but I, I said fuck it, I posted it anyway. Um, so I just said that uh, you know basically just comment on how uh, white people feel like it's or some white people I say. Mm-hmm. Um, feel like it's cool that as long as a black person got a criminal record, then is is it you know is admissible to get shot by the police, right? So, and I'm saying that in all honesty though, because it's like um, that's the rebuttal. Like people get killed by the police. Can I interrupt you real quick? Go ahead. Just because you're guilty, that does not mean you need to be murdered by the police, too, Thank you. right? Simple as that. Simple. That sounds simple Guilt enough. Guilt does right? not mean you have to get murdered, bro. That sounds simple enough. So, and that's why I said that shit, because I'm like, there's a lot of people, you say like, oh, shit, I can't believe this happened, and then people say, oh, fuck, he was a criminal and a crackhead anyway. All right, that's fine. Like, I can sell all the dope, use all the dope, I can rape and pilferage motherfucking villages, <laughs> but when I get pulled over by the police, I should be detained and go through You should have your rules. rights, yeah. yeah. You got your rights, yeah, exactly. Shit. So, I'm just like, how is it that, that, that the rebuttal to situations involving the police killing black people is always, but he was a criminal? So, I, you know, I posted that shit, right? And, you know, we went to a, a PWI, you know what I'm saying? So, we went <laughs> to um, Adrian College. <laughs> and because of that, I got a lot of white friends, mm-hmm. you know, or a lot of white associates, associates or whatever you want to call them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I fuck with white people. Like, mm-hmm. I fuck with white people. So, and sometimes I post shit and I think it, I'm pretty sure it make them uncomfortable. So That's for, good, though. They need to be made uncomfortable. It's good, though, right? So, I posted it and legitimately, like, Three of my white friends and shit commented. Just three. Mm-hmm. Now, it's a lot of y'all on this mm-hmm. motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I feel like somebody else should have you know, maybe said something. But then uh, one one white dude I know and shit, um, not from school, but actually from the neighborhood, which is probably why his perspective is a little different. <laughs> um, he said that, uh, you know, white people that think that is mostly racist. And then he also said that, uh, he said something else. Damn, I can't remember. It was something important. But this butcher's cut bourbon is really getting to me now. And I can't remember, <laughs> but but like I, I felt I felt what he was saying. And then uh, somebody else said some uh, a white guy that uh, actually listened to our show. Um, shout out to Gooseface. I don't know his real name, but that's his uh, that's his his uh, handle. But um, but he was he was just also saying like you know that, that it's like it's a stigma, like it's a thing like that people just need to get over because like it's not true, like you know it's, it's not true that every black criminal like deserved to, to to die basically. Right. Right. So so I felt that, but he also said that. Um, which is the the point I was gonna make. He also said that the white people who are silent right now are complicit in so, that yeah. thing. <laughs> By not saying something, makes you kind of like, eh, you know what I'm saying? Being I, silent is being complicit. Right it now, is. Right? It, you know what it I mean? is. I mean, because 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 really, you know, you you have to make a stand right now. Things mm-hmm. are so bad right now, you can't just act like this is not happening. Exactly. So you have to make a stand one way or the other, right? Mm-hmm. And it, it, if you don't stand on the same line as me, okay, like. Man. If you were willing to admit that, like, okay, I can respect that. I can no longer fuck with you, right? <laughs> but I respect that. Like, you know, I can no okay. fuck with At you. least you're telling me the truth right now. Like, I can get with that. Like, you the know? shit that we had is over, but. <laughs> yeah, right? You know what I mean? But, like, yeah, you know, I respect that. Like, yeah. you know, so like me, you, you know, other people, you know, within our circle, right? Mm-hmm. We put all the cards on the table, dude. Like, this is what you see is what you're going to get. You know For what I sure. mean? Like, I, if, if you want to have a conver- like a real conversation about race relations and things mm-hmm. like that, like we're going to have a real conversation. I'm not yeah, going to yeah. pull any punches. Nah. I'm not going to worry about your comfort level. I'm going to tell you exactly, <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you what I know to be fat, yeah. right? Then I'm, I'm, then I'm going to give you my opinion, right? Yeah. And we may not agree, yeah. but like I think more of those discussions need to happen. Mm-hmm. Like, especially when it comes, like we talk about education, especially when it comes to education. Mm-hmm. You, you know, so if we were to compare like primarily white schools, right? Mm-hmm. And then primarily black schools. You know, like so a, a public school in the city of Detroit or in Flint, Benton Harbor, any predominantly black area right. to any predominantly white area, right? We can look at how educational redlining, so to speak, is happening. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? How these lines are always moved around where, yes, black schools get funding. And when they get an increase in funding, it is made to look like it's an actual increase. But what it really is is the money you should have been getting any fucking way, exactly. right? But it's made to look like an increase in funding. And when it c- comparatively Facts. from black districts to white districts, right, on test scores and things like that, like it's been proven over and over and over and over again 
that like standard standardized tests are culturally biased from yeah. like situations they ask and those word problems. Like black people can't relate to some of that shit, right? And that's been going on you since know? the seventies. Yeah, Probably since forever. 60s, whatever, yeah. Dude, like since they had standardized tests. <laughs> And, and, and let's not even get into the discussion of, like, teacher quality, right? Uh-huh. I'm not saying the city of Detroit has shitty fucking teachers, right? I'm not mm-hmm. saying that at all. I'm saying when it comes to the performance of duties, right? Mm-hmm. So when you, and you're in a predominantly white district and the average t- uh, student-to-teacher ratio is 18 to 1, then you go to the city it's and it's 38 to 1, to 1 or exactly. whatever it is, mm-hmm. right? Of course, that teacher is going to have lower performance scores. They're not going to... They physically cannot get around to each student like they need to to, to, to make sure they're learning properly, right? Exactly. So Facts. things like that happen on an everyday basis, right? Mm. So when we talk about white privilege, that is white privilege right there. You it know, is. that's that's systematic racism, right? There's nobody hating each other, supposedly. Yeah. But there is a division of funds and, and effort when it comes to like making sure these kids get the same education as these kids are getting. And that's not happening. And you can't you can't argue with that. You can't you, you cannot go against <laughs> those facts. Like, you can't. It's right. there. It, it's, it's been proven. That's nigga, it. These are facts, nigga. <laughs> hey, but you know what What I just thought about, though? When you were saying that shit, it's something I hadn't really thought about. So, you know how a lot of the schools surrounding the Detroit area and shit are open enrollment now? Mm-hmm. Right? And we looked at that as a good opportunity mm-hmm. to get our kids out there. But now I just realized, though, because of gentrification... Mm-hmm. This was just a way for them to continue to go to their same schools, right. but come exactly. to the city. And then make it more exclusive and whatnot, Duh. right? And that's just another way for them to close offline, Bro, more educational red line. I really just thought about that shit just then. We thought it was for us. The whole <laughs> time it wasn't, dog. Damn. Yeah, the shit, the shit thanks really to, is not checkers. It's chess for real. Dog, thanks to, thanks to the butcher's cut bourbon, dog. That shit just got some enlightenment. Dog, for real, because like all this time I'm thinking like, damn, they open a Roman, that mean like, some of our kids get to like get a, a better educational experience. But it wasn't for us. On though. the surface, it looks good though, right? Hell but then yeah. you got to think about things like school lunches and transportation and after school activities and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. You know, yes, you may have open enrollment, but you on the whole, you know, white families have better opportunities and resources <laughs> to get to different things than you no know, black families do. I mean, and that's just what it is, right? Yeah. So they didn't move to the city, but they got the means to get back and forth to the to the school they so came whatever, from. or yeah, yeah. or to take a particular zone within that city and make this like their exclusive, you know, it's whatever unwritten rules there mm-hmm. are to make this the exclusives, these exclusive schools. And, right. you know, certain things are then, certain things exchange hands, yeah. but certain people make certain decisions to benefit Thanks. one group of people over another group of people, right? Damn. Even within the own, their own school zone, their own school district. Yeah. It's, it's, it's wild, man. Damn, financial, educational, redlining, everything. Everything. Just redlining, mm. insurance. Fucking insurance. Anyway. And then, so, <laughs> it, it, you know what? Okay, I, I know this. I know that I said this was a different po- topic, right? But, but fuck it, we here. <laughs> we, we're here. The school to prison pipeline, right? Uh-huh. And as a student, when you don't, when you see your opportunities are dwindling or don't exist, or you look across the street in some facts, you know, where a white student or an Indian or an Asian or whatever, mm-hmm. they're getting like, a thousand time better education or school experience or whatever it is, and I'm not getting that, yeah. right? I mean, it's hard to be positive about the future. It's hard to be yeah. positive about what opportunities do I have, right? right? I'm, 15, four, I'm 14, 15, 16 years old. They're already taking opportunities away from me. Yeah. So what do I know now? You know, I got, I got a mad crossover. <laughs> it's right? a mad crossover. You know what I mean? <laughs> or right, yeah, got a dope. I got a dope jump shot. I can get yeah. Or you or got a lot of dope customs. game and shit. You got or, a lot of you know, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so so then like, you don't see as many opportunities growing up as you know an eight, nine, ten, eleven year old as white and Asian eight, nine, ten. And I say Asian because like I don't know, I don't know what the difference is or you know what happened between you know, all of those. Yeah, but Asian you know communities yeah. typically thrive just like white communities, right? Yeah. But like, is it because they're sticking together? That could be it. That could very well be it. Right? I know? mean, obviously the resource is different. But, but you know, I, I guess the argument to that is like other ethnic groups stay together too. Like you look at folks from Cambodia and stuff like that that come over here. And like, because like Southwest Detroit is getting a real like big, you know, Southern Asian population now, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so and like they typically stick together as communities, right? But they're still mm-hmm. maligned. You know, I don't want to say just as bad as black folks, but mm-hmm. they're still maligned nonetheless because they're, mm-hmm. I hate using this term, but they are people of color, you know? <laughs> 
I hate can't using that, hate shit. that shit. I hate that shit, right? Yeah, people of color, you know? I hate that shit. Because I just don't want to take someone's whole culture and just like nah. put it into a box of people of color. Like how they do yeah, us. Yeah, like how they do us, yeah, exactly. We're so compassionate. Mm-hmm. So anyway, always worried about what other people. Always, I, I think us more than any other. Like, yeah. and maybe I'm being biased, but yeah, I think nah, black people yeah. are just compassionate, just by just because. Fuck. I yeah. hope that everything's okay. I hope yeah. that they're doing all right. You know, I hope I didn't offend anyone. You know, I, I heard one person say, just kick person, my ass though." In not anybody famous, but person I personally know say that we know what real struggle, real strife, and what like real like anguish looks like. So when we see it, we empathize with that person, right? Facts. You know, and yeah, that facts for sure. I understand that. That makes sense. But. But. (laughs) But. And dear. When you're going through the same thing or something that's worse, you need to pay attention to what's at home before you. And, you know, Monk said something earlier that like on the surface, I hate to, I hate to agree with him with, but I do agree with him with. (laughs) What's that? Like some things like. Trump is right about. Like, I mean, yeah. Like, you fuck with your own first. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? Like, so he's that. talking about Americans. I'm talking about black people. Black people, people yeah. You know what I mean? mean? So, but the concept, though. The concept, the concept exactly. Concept right? With, yeah. and, and that's the thing. Because, like, I got a uh, shout out to my cousin, Ray. Man, let me fix that. He's not talking about Americans. He's talking about rich white males. I'm sorry. Which is America. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, shout out to my cousin, Ray, man, which, who is the... The most militant motherfucker I know, like for real, like even more militant than you. Uh, yeah. I'm talking about where we I, at. I, I'm not militant like that though. Just... Anyway, yeah, go, ahead, go, so. ahead, go ahead. Where well, we had like barbecues, mm-hmm. and, he, and he he breaking out volume one, two, three, and four of Hidden Colors, nigga. Like, he, <laughs> he that guy, right? But then we had a whole conversation uh, a few barbecues ago, or a couple barbecues ago, and uh, he said he a Trump supporter. Completely fucked me all the way up because I couldn't understand. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, he. I think his thing was about you know some of the the crime bills and shit that Joe Biden passed and shit. I get that, but that's not gonna make me support the other motherfucker. No, this is just like how Trump shit ain't gonna make me support Biden. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just can't do it. Like, if we making a, you know, you forced I, us to go to school and you told us that decision making is a thing. Mm-hmm. Like, making decisions is a thing. You gotta is a, a whole lot of shit you gotta consider. And when the whole lot of shit don't make sense, how you expect me to make a for real what they call an educated get, decision? Yeah. So like I can't do it, mm-hmm. and it fucked me all the way up though, cause he like super militant, and he like he a Trump supporter. Like niggas was like my stomach was hurting. I stopped talking. I just got high and looked into the sky and shit. So that's my nigga. I love him to death, but I'm just saying. I like, got you. Shit. Yeah. So I guess I can see how some people would consider me militant. I probably I'm not, I'm not that militant when I'm hit, pulling out hidden figures at barbecues, right? I'm <laughs> hidden colors at barbecues, right? No. But I will say this, shit. right? Like you I. That shit. So, I know, even though I'm not a fan of Biden, mm-hmm. and I don't plan on voting for Biden or Trump, mm-hmm. I, I know black people are in a better situation with Biden as president mm-hmm. than Trump as president. Mm-hmm. I also know you can't dress up dog shit and call it, you know, like dog food call or whatever, sugar, whatever, that, yeah. however that fuck that saying goes, sugar. right? Anyway, yeah. what I'm saying is can't this, right? Shit and make it sugar, dude. We, yeah, you know, we are looking at how bad fucking Trump is, is and then we're bad. looking at, yeah, then we're looking at the Democratic, which typically what black people vote for, right? Democrats, right? Mm-hmm. We're looking at the Democratic, you know, uh, uh, candidate, and. It's Joe Biden, and he was with Obama, and everybody fucked with Obama and all this shit. And I think we're just making that false equivalency that, like, this is good for black people. Yeah. It might be better for black people right. than it, Trump. It might be less bad. Yeah, exactly. But it's <laughs> still not bad. good for us. And, and I think we are too, shorted, too short-sighted in this whole election thing, right? We are not looking long. We're looking just right now. We're not yeah. looking long-term about having the Democratic Party just reform totally or just leaving no motherfuckers, right? And just and seeking another party that was really that, that really fuck with. Start really you know fuck what I mean? with yeah, this, or the Green Party exactly, or whatever. Exactly, or whatever yeah. party. Or start our own party. But that's, that's, that's difficult. That's hard. That's tough. People don't know how to go about that, mm-hmm. right? So they want something. They want change, but they want it in a, a, a easy, like, conduit, right? They want somebody to build it out for them. So we got to kind of got to do this shit like... Uh, like sports and shit, right? You know how sometimes you see a kid who like, especially like in PAL or some shit, who like seven or eight, and you see they got that factor, right? You're like, mm-hmm. no, this motherfucker gonna be good. Like, what if we did politicians like that? Let them work it all the way up until, 
Because it's going to be hard to be, like, in a green party and be, like, in the Senate or some shit, probably. Like, I'm not sure. But It's up to the people. It really is. Yeah, so what it if we is. did something like that, though? Like, just really got behind a candidate early on. You know what I'm saying? And maybe maybe they're a Democrat or a Republican. Hey, I, 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 I even say maybe a Republican. Um, but at this point, as a, like, state rep. But then, like, they really doing some shit. And somehow we convinced them with the money and the support behind them to, like, maybe go independent or become the Green Party. But still, just push them all the way through the ranks. It's like, follow this person all the way through state rep, senate, you know, all this shit until you get to a point where you can actually be, you know, president. I think this is... Could that work? Like, the, the, the third party thing, man, I don't think it's at the point where, like, a grass movement is, like, kind of option is going to work. Uh, I think some, like, some earth-shattering shit needs to happen. Yeah, you know right. I mean? Like, yeah, literally, right. you know? Like, yeah. for... for a whole so black people make up what twelve or thirteen percent of the total US population. For mm-hmm. all twelve or thirteen percent of us, you know, aggressive Negroes and docile ass Negroes, you know, Negroes. for us to kind of see things in this <laughs> it's gonna have to be some like major shit that happens. That was right? the first docile ass Negro for the uh, for the, <laughs> for the new season, right? <laughs> um uh, I, I don't see that happening, man. man. Um I mean, I, so I don't, fuck? what do we do, nigga, then? I mean, what do we do? We got to get off our asses. We got we to do some work, first of all, right? And we're, 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 so, yes, yeah, so we're just expecting something to be dropped in our laps from one of these from one of these candidates. Like, no, we really have to get out there and, like, make it known, like, whether it's marching or protesting or, or starting, you know, community organizations or whatever it is, like, like, dude, like, the Democratic Party, like, the Republican Party really don't fuck with us, right? So right. I don't think that's even a question. But then, like, I'd make it, you know, the Democratic Party, we've been fucking with since the 60s, and they, they, they nothing's happened. Right. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah. they throw you a bone here or there, right? You know, like the folks in the NAACP and stuff like that, you mm. know, they give y'all a little funding, so y'all think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread and shit. You know, like, I think we just, we still, we, what's that saying? We still feeding from the, from the, from the teat or the tit or whatever the fuck oh, right, call, right, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got you. And so, like... You got to totally like disconnect that that relationship. I think, right? You know, we really got to find out some shit on like on our own. And see, you know? this is this is scary part because that's the shit that we got to be on, kind of devoid of government, and that's kind of the platform but, that Trump running on. And that's why I think a lot of black, or I ain't gonna say a lot, but some black people, some. fuck with him because he give him that that thing that that feel like you're not really fucking with the government, right? Right. And that's why a lot of and it's crazy, like. I, I swear to God, I know I say this shit a lot, and motherfuckers be like, "Nigga, let that shit go." But I be like, "Dog, I really be trying to figure out where Candace Owens coming from." I re- or or people like Candace Owens. Yeah, I, I be trying to. I tell you exactly where she coming from. Well, I know where she comes. The she people the that money fu- grab. yeah, she the people the that grab. fund her, that's what their views yeah, are. She yeah, she about the money grab. But I mean, people who genuinely like fuck with her or fuck with him and shit, like or Republican Party or politics in general. Like, I just wonder. I seen uh it was a Trump rally and shit and all these black people which was which was a little different. They had all these black people on there, uh, who kinda like Candace Owens and shit. They kinda upstanding black citizens and shit and we didn't got all political, I didn't mean to do that shit. But like I'm trying to get to a point where I don't automatically look at them like, What look at this motherfucker. I'm trying to get past that point, but it's hard, dog. Like every time I see it, like, dog, if you don't sit your bitch ass down, is what I be thinking. But I be wanting to know like what really made you feel like this? Like, like I really want to know. Cause, and, and I and I can safely say that because I don't I don't have that with Joe Biden and shit. Like I know niggas trying to vote for Joe Biden and shit because he not Trump. But at the end of the day, I don't fuck with him either because he he's selling me a dream. Social Security not coming back. You know what I'm saying? And 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 fucking law enforcement reform don't do shit without laws being changed. Y'all niggas. I'm not going for the pump fake no more, dog. I've been getting pump fake since I was 18. Since I was able to vote and pay attention to this shit. So, I've been going for the pump fake my whole fucking life. I'm straight, bro. Breonna Taylor's family getting $12 million from the city of Louisville. Because they know they wrong. That's dope as fuck. Like, I'm happy for her family. Don't but it's because they wrong. know they wrong. But Right. They, so they, she got to change. They, they, they should be compensated. They should receive they that should. money. But that's, that, you know what that else should happen? It. Them niggas need to go to jail. Them niggas need to, uh, at, at the very least, be charged. No, at, at the least, very yeah, fucking at least. least. At least you know, they'll be, be a charged trial with that shit. Yes, so, yeah. right? You know, at the very, yes. Yeah, so they, they, they murder an innocent fucking woman and shit, right? Yeah. You know, um, anyway. I don't want to say anyway because that, that that's not that's like that's, that's, that's I don't want to make it seem like I'm dismissing that shit. 
Hell but, no, and they deserve every penny they get and more. But that don't need to be it though. That really don't need to be it, bro. Like that shit is that shit is illegal. If they'd have, if they'd have broken that motherfucker on any motherfucker in anybody else's warrant, and a and a white EMT because she was an EMT, right? Mm-hmm. Got killed in the process and shit, dog. This should have been. We wouldn't be having this discussion. Muhammad Noor, mm-hmm. the cop in Minnesota that killed the white woman. Minnesota, yes. The dog. He went to jail with the quickness. Immediately. I don't even remember it being a trial. <laughs> that that motherfucker <laughs> got charged. No, he got convicted fired. Convicted and sent to prison. If yeah, fired. Like, he got fired immediately. It wasn't no question. It wasn't no, well, we got to see how shit. It wasn't no, I want to wait till what the union says. It's like, no, Duh. nigga, you no longer have a job. We exactly. are going to charge you. Your ass going to jail. Yes, and you man. going to, like, official, like, bend me over and fuck me in the booty prison and shit. <laughs> like, forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Duh. Like, they, told, like uh, they probably told that nigga that shit. Yeah. Damn, that shit crazy. We got to talk some more about this. Justice right? moved really swiftly on that one and shit. No, we got to talk. You know what? That We got to talk some more about this on the second uh, episode. Because we uh, didn't got way off track. I know. Too. I know. We, we talk, have. We I probably talk about uh, education. And Damn, shit. Mike. This butcher's cut. Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Good looking out, Mike. For sure. For sure. All right. We're going to get back on subject. And then we're going to get up out of here, dog. But we are going to revisit this whole kind of quasi-political conversation we have on the second episode. We don't get too political and shit <laughs> because we've done that before. You know what? We should try to get Stu on here and shit. For the political shit. I like to get Republican. Yeah, Republican white, and shit. White, white male Republican. Republican. Yeah. Who we actually can have but a conversation with. I fuck with him because like he's a real dude. Yeah, I fuck with Stu. We don't, obviously, we don't agree on a lot of shit. We don't. Yeah, we don't. But he's a real dude. And I fuck, I fuck with, with, with Stu because He care about me and like he really, he that's genuinely care saying. about you and shit. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So he genuinely a, care about you. It's a genuine concern about like what's really going on. So I fuck with him and shit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely. Stu, if you watch this episode, though, we're going to get you on. Hopefully for the second one. Matter of fact, I'm gonna hit you up right after the after we record this to see if uh see what your schedule is like this weekend. My man Stu. Dog nah, for sure. But uh back on the educational tip, dog. I just feel like um like classical education, depending on what, what you're going to school for, obviously, um, is is a bit overrated. Well, you know what? Let me take that back. I think I'm a I'm a I am cause cause somebody mentioned this on the last show or off camera or something. But um I think it I think it primarily is about the money. So let me say this then. I won't say that education is overrated, but I do think that that the price of education needs to be more in line with with real life money that you go make. <laughs> I don't want to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a degree that I'm gonna get a job and make thirty thousand. Yeah, it when, just don't make when, sense. When the job qualifications is master degree <laughs> and the compensation gets down to like twenty one dollars an hour. No, yeah. right. No, oh, that should work out. No, bro. What? No, bro. Only because there's people with no education that's getting twenty dollars an hour, bro. So I'm just, you know, I ain't trying to, and I and I ain't shitting on nobody. And and it's funny because like me and you, we sit here on these conversations. We talk about school and we we a little bit shit on it, <laughs> but like it's I, it's probably funny to people because like you say, obviously you working towards the doctors. I got a, uh, you know, I got a uh, associates. Uh, what's that shit? I got a bachelor's, bachelor's. degree. <laughs> we both got degrees, but we both are and associates, yeah, right? <laughs> Duh. Yeah, like so we got degrees and shit, so we like um but we do have a different opinion. I know that most people who got degrees, they probably like, you know, they advocates. Like yeah, you should go to school, keep your head buried in the books, get a three point I mean a, a four point five and shit, you know, 'cause I guess niggas be getting extra credit or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm I'm not that dog. I'm I'm one of the ones I I mean I say this often and when I say it, I know people probably don't believe it just because I got a degree, but in real life um, I was never, I was never the school type. Like I probably could have been, like maybe if you focus more or whatever, or whatever you need to do to be a good school uh, student. But I didn't do that, and I know that there's a lot of people like me, and a pro- probably a lot of people like in a even in a worse position where like not only do they not have a focus, but they don't even have a desire. Right, so, right. And, yeah. and I, I can't shit on that at all. So that's yeah. why I'm always the one. Like you know what, really think about this when you make a decision, because like this is a real decision. I honestly, like I said earlier in the show. I went to I went to school because I felt like I had to. Mm-hmm. I didn't go to school because I made a decision to. You know what I'm saying? Like people, when people make a decision to go to school, like I applaud y'all. Like I, I damn near envy y'all. Like if you decide to go or decide not to go, you made a decision. I went because I was like, fuck, I, I gotta go. You know so, what I'm saying? I gotta say this. I went to college. I went to school because I wanted to play ball at mm-hmm. the next level, right? Gotcha. Initially, that that's why I went. Okay. 
I'm gonna keep it hundred percent real. Like my mom's wanted me to go to college. She wanted me to get a degree. Right. My pops was totally on some shit. Like, hey, bro, <laughs> do what you got. <laughs> you want to be a welder? You want to be an electrician? Right. He was like, you go to school. Like that shit. That shit costs. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Facts. And so I can't totally, you know, like most of us, like, yeah, we were, we were pushed by our parents and things like that. You know yeah. what I mean? So I can't say totally say I was pushed by my parents. I want to keep on sit real. And I want to play ball too. Right. You know, yeah. at, at some type of college level, whatever yeah. it was. But anyway, long story short, he tried to, I, I think he tried to put it, at least plant the seed to like do like success can mean, you know, being a carpenter. Yeah, I mean, being an electrician. Sure. Like, yeah, yeah, you can do other shit too. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And see, my, I think it, it was, it was me. It wasn't my parents. Mm-hmm. It was me. Like, for my sister, my sister was like hella smart. She like graduated top three percent of her school and shit. Like mm-hmm. education was her thing. So like she went because she wanted to go. Now she didn't necessarily go where she wanted to go. I told her like she was too busy worried about the family. She didn't want to go too far away type mm-hmm. shit. I tell her to to this point, I don't know if she regretted, but I regret it. I w- I feel like I wish she had a you know, went further. Like yeah. she had a like a twenty like twenty something on her fucking ACT, top three percent in her <laughs> high school, and then you know she ended up staying local to go to school. Like you didn't have to though, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like she had opportunities for education. I, I really didn't, but and she made that decision. I didn't make the decision. Though. I got you. I went because motherfuckers was like, "This was this the next step." Yeah, it was. I feel so, that. And at this point though, you talking about growing up in a household with, you know, uh, a nurse's assistant and a, and a factory worker. Mm-hmm. So it's like. I don't want to work in the factory, so let me just go to school. Hey, wasn't really a decision. I feel that. So yeah. it, you know, similar backgrounds. Like, so my mom was, was was a bank teller, then eventually a bank like supervisor, right? Gotcha. My pops was a cop. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like blue collar as hell, right? Exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, damn, I forgot what I was about to say. <laughs> that goddamn butcher's cut. I know, right? Damn, that butcher's cut real. Shit. <laughs> We gonna have to cut that shit. Yeah, we're gonna cut that shit, nigga. <laughs> like I said, I had a valid motherfucking point. No, I for real had a point. And shit, blue Man, collar, was about making say? decisions about going to school, similar backgrounds. I don't know, nigga. Nobody forced you to go to school. I don't know, nigga. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 so I, I think part of that too. You know, um, I want to talk about some self responsibility. Gotcha. I can't speak for you, but I know for me. Part of that for me was, at that age, I was kind of lazy academically, I want to say, for right? Sure. For sure. So I graduated with like a 2.4 or a 2.5 or something like that from high Facts. school, right? Yes. But Facts. you know when I got on the ACT? Mm. A 29. Fuck, for real? Yeah. God I t- damn. I got 29 on the motherfucking ACT and see, shit, right? Oh, so you're one of the smart motherfuckers who didn't apply themselves. But see, that's the thing, though. Like, I don't... I hate when people say don't you didn't apply yourself, right? If you got a twenty nine on fucking no, ACT no. and had a two point four no. motherfucking yes. That's Cause, what cause, that is. No, 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 no. I don't I yes. totally I, I totally disagree. And let me tell you why. Okay, right? Tell me why, cause shit, I need to understand. Because there's certain things that are like like just like if you were in a relationship we had with a fucking twenty nine? Yes. Just like <laughs> if right, you ahead, just like ahead. if you're in a relationship with a female, right? Uh-huh. There's certain things that stimulates her and certain things that stimulates you, right? Right. And you know, uh it um educationally, you know, intellectually, however you want to put it, there were certain things that caught my interest and certain things that didn't, yeah. you know, like, yeah. so literally there were certain things that I was, I was not interested in. Yeah. So, I, I mean, not to say I was, I was lazy, I just never really, you know, had my interest. And not to say that, like, that's a choice in high school, because high yeah. school is really about learning a little bit of everything, I guess, right? You know right. what I mean? Yeah. True. Trying to make you ready for life and shit, but... It's just certain things that, like, I didn't just, like, I just didn't fuck with at the time. Like, yeah. and I really still don't, really to this day. Yeah. But, um, it was other things that, like, damn, like, lit a yeah. fire underneath me, you know? Right. So, you know, you were talking about, like, how could, why didn't, why hasn't, you know, teaching and education changed and how we approach that change. Right. I don't know. Maybe it's not enough people like me that's in those leadership positions, right? That's Fact. just kind of, yeah. I don't and, know. Because it's like, it's like this, and, and this is where I got the concept from. And then we go, uh, we go get out of here so we can finish this drink. But uh, when again, I was working at Comcast, and this is when I was working in the uh, the call center. So this is when I was on the phone, which fucking sucked. But anyway, um, when we had training, uh, our trainer, which is 
something different from any trainer I, I ever had. Um, she actually split us up. Like they mm-hmm. ask you, do you learn better hands on? Do you learn better listening, like being lectured, or do you learn better? Uh, what was the other one? Visual. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, so it's those three things. So you get to answer these little survey questions. So then I realized, like I was a uh, I was a hands on person. But anyway, they split the groups up. So like, it was still all the same training, but like she knew how to identify certain people. So like when mm-hmm. you didn't understand. Then she would like if I was in the in the uh, you know the the hands on shit and I didn't understand something then they would we would when she taught me something she would let me do it. It sounded like her emotional intelligence was on a hundred plus. You know what I mean? Hundred. Like like she knew dog. how to read her audience and shit. Bro, right? and I fucking love her, dog. That was my trainer. Oh my god, I can't think of her name right now. I think she probably still there. But that's genius, though. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you really had that kind of time or resources to do with yeah. students. And, what? So like when somebody don't understand something, you beating them over here with telling them, but they are but they are visual motherfuckers. And you know, so you didn't provide them no visual, so they never uh, gonna learn. And that's the Dog, crazy that's thing. Crazy. So first of all, I think it's kind of crazy that our corporations have more money and resources and yeah, flexibility and time to do things like that than our school systems, right? That's crazy. Right? Because th- again, you know, so I um, I. I manage a talent acquisition department at a certain organization, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes there's people that don't really pull their weight. <laughs> so sometimes those people that pull right. their weight, you know, there's a certain process you go about documenting and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. There is so much documentation and proof and facts that you have to provide. And I get that. I'm not against it at all. Yeah. You have to provide before you separate someone, right? Yeah. And that just made me realize, like, just... The amount of training and all this that goes into this person before we separate them because we've already because because we, we put so much money into them already, right? Exactly. Can we salvage this person? Yeah. Why isn't education like that? <laughs> Duh, that? Instead, we just send them to some alternative school or whatever, yeah. or just you know label them as a cast off, and then we surprised four years later when they robbing somebody on the street corner and shit because that's <laughs> right, the only option laughing. they have to not eat. Not laughing, but yes, you know what I mean. Yes. That's fucked up. Like, it's that's real. true though. If that same emphasis was put in, like the you know the actual educational system, because like I said, just like how you said with that shit, that's absolutely true. And just like how I was with uh, you know with my trainer, it's just like I was I was amazed though. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like I'm tripping. Like damn, this is like a new way of learning. Mm-hmm. I'm just like damn, that's because it, and I'm sitting. And here you with, got a degree. No, and I, I got a degree. And I'm and I'm sitting there, and I'm like all of these people like like. Uh, we really, we all getting along. We all feel like we the same people. But mm-hmm. then, then that's when I realized, like, we all learn so fucking different. But nobody took the time out to see, nigga. So mm-hmm. it's like, so you think that I'm slow, but I just don't, I don't kind of, I don't learn shit like exactly. that. Exactly. And I'm that nigga that asks questions, right? Because yeah. I want, because I, I, whatever it is, I need to verify that, like, I, I'm thinking the right thing and shit. Right. And then, like, niggas get... Why is this nigga asking questions? Stop. Exactly. Because I don't get it, motherfucker, right? right? You know what I mean? I learn differently. You know what I mean? Because you got... So that's what this shit's about. And I, and I saw it because we in, we in different groups. So I mm-hmm. saw it. Like, the motherfuckers who, who learn by being lectured, mm-hmm. oh, they annoyed with shit. Because, uh, right. like, they understand. Mm-hmm. Like, as soon as you tell me, I get it. Like, well, fuck you, bitch. No, I man, don't. I don't get it, motherfucker, <laughs> exactly. okay? But it's some people that's like that. Kudos they, to you, motherfucker, exactly. okay? They yeah. absorb that shit, though. Right. And I, and I... It was a few in our class. It was funny. Because, like, whenever somebody asked a question, they was like, oh, God. Right? <laughs> like, because they got it. Like, mm-hmm. okay, nigga, I didn't get it. I need to see it. Right. So, like, just for example, like, we doing, you know, cars and shit. So, like, we working, let's just say we working on a nigga bill or some shit. Mm-hmm. So, they telling us, that they giving us the program, tell us what we need to do in the program. Like, you need to click this, click that, click this and shit. And in my head, I'm like, nigga, what? <laughs> so, the people who absorb that shit, they like... They said, do this, do that. Like, no, nigga, but I need to, yeah. I need to do it. I need it. to do it. Yeah. I can't even see it. I, I need to have to a it. sandbox mode or some shit. Bro, you, know? you understand what I'm yeah. saying? I need to click that bitch, like, physically hit mm-hmm. the button because I don't get it. Now, once I physically hit the button, it's like fucking muscle memory. Mm-hmm. I get it then. Like, shit, but, but like, it's some niggas who can just visually see it or can just audibly hear it. And, right. and they straight. Nigga, yeah. I can't do that shit. I got to, because my shit's all about muscle memory. That's the only thing I remember. Like, I doing shit because I did it before. Mm-hmm. That's it. Like, that's as simple as that. Just like just like this shit, dog. Just a prime example. Like, I've never been classically trained how to broadcast or do editing and shit. And I can't explain it to another motherfucker. But because I, it's muscle memory, like, I just do it. Like I, And I thought about that the other day because I was editing some video. 
and like I was trying to splice something together and do a little transition and shit. And I could never explain that shit to nobody. But in my head, nigga, I'm clicking file, click edit, shit and, shit, sense, yeah. and just do it and shit. And then I, after I did, I'm like, damn, like my shit really on like some robot shit. Cause like I remember it cause I did it, but I never, when a nigga telling me how to do that shit, I'm never going to be able to do it. Like I just don't, I don't receive that shit like that. And Which just, is why the police shouldn't respond to every fucking situation that not anyway. Exactly. That's a right. totally different situation. Anyway, go ahead. We gonna talk about that yeah. shit. We we got a we got a season ahead of us, boy. <laughs> Thanks to the pandemic, we got a season uh-huh. ahead of us, dog, for uh-huh. real. All right, look, we gonna get out of here, dog, because shit, this has been fun. So <laughs> let's get back to the to the bourbon dog. Shout out again to uh Michael Forsyth, uh one of the master distillers, and of course uh John P. Jerome, which is the master mm-hmm. distiller who's uh, granddaddy's finger. Hey, Mike, I just hope you okay, bro. <laughs> Duh, right. We're gonna do some more shots. I hope you okay, cuz. Shout out to my <laughs> man, Mike. Oh, my guy. Yeah. Yo, we got it in that evening, boy. We sure did. Woo. We gotta get down there before, before it get cold. Before it get cold. Most I liked death. it outside. Most I, liked, death. I liked it outside. We gotta do that. And I'm bringing me some Emperor Cuts cigars and shit, too. So we doing that. Um, Random white girl fan club we had out there. Oh, they cool as hell. They was cool. Yeah. They was cool. Yeah. Shout out to y'all. I For forget sure. y'all name, but shout out to y'all because I know y'all say y'all was gonna check us out, but you know. I know that, and they did check us out. Yeah, and they followed okay. our page and everything. Yeah, y'all so. was cute. Y'all was cute. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? That's cute. <laughs> they all they famous in our pictures and shit. Yeah. But um, yeah, back to this, I guess. Uh, bourbon cut whiskey, dog. The uh, butcher's cut bourbon whiskey and shit. What's what's your final analysis on that shit? Dog, I, li- I like it. Yeah. Again, you know, um, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a fan of like sweet liquors and whatnot, right? You know, I know, okay, I know, I am, I am. I, I wasn't am. even about to go there. <laughs> you might as well. So I know bourbons are sweeter than most liquors, but uh, it has a like a spiciness and like almost like a uh, there's a good amount of cedar in there for me that kind of evens that out for me, right? Yeah. Um, I'm a fan, man. You know, I if if Going back to last season, if mm-hmm. I had to compare this to, to Bro Brothers, I think I'd take – well, I know I'd take Bro Brothers. Yeah. But this this is right behind it, I think, though, man. Yeah. You know, like, uh, this is pretty damn good. Oh, yeah, it's definitely I'm pretty impressed. good. I'm um, impressed. Yeah, it is. Bro Brothers, I know it's going to be hard to – it's going to be hard. I mean, yeah. I don't know if it's the backstory with them or what. I don't, I don't know. It, and it's good. And it's good. It's good. But yeah. I will say this, too, right? You know, um, Bro Brothers is black-owned. I think we identify, you know, we come from similar cultures. We identify with them. So, obviously, yes, I'll admit it may be some bias there, right? <laughs> you know, it may be. But you cannot go wrong with Butcher's Cut. You cannot go wrong with Bro Brothers. You know, if we're really looking at, like, a lot of bourbons and bourbons and whiskeys, you know, Uncle Nearest, Traverse City whiskey. Sure. Traverse City is nice. Yeah, like the, yeah, there's, I'm, I'm there's a few brands. I'm making City today, actually. There's a few brands we can't go wrong with right there. For sure. You know? Yeah. Definitely in the top tier, no doubt. For sure. No doubt for sure. That. Um, so, yeah, my, I think uh, the Butcher's Cut, I haven't had the rye yet because Detroit City Distillery does have a rye uh, whiskey. Uh, but, yeah, this one, which which is odd because, like you said before, it's certainly it's not sweet at all. I'm used to what I like is, uh, is a caramel taste because it's, it's sweeter, obviously. And a little less spice. That's usually my thing. Like something sweet with a, with with less spice. That's really my thing. And that's why Bro Brothers was like, you know, uh, the shit for me, uh, because you know I like it. And even Gentleman's Jack. But anyway, <laughs> and we we may do Gentleman's Jack this. this I don't even know he could season. put Gentleman Jack and Bro Brothers in the I mean, same not, category. I'm I'm in the same not, sentence. Okay, not in the same. It's not yeah, the same category. Same. same sentence though. We might explore that this year if he if he allows it. But, we can uh, do Gentleman's Jack. <laughs> We, we we would probably do dual reviews dual. that week, right? He can do Gentleman's Jack. I'll do some. Duh. I'll do like five o'clock vodka because I'd rather drink that than Gentleman's Jack. <laughs> what? That's what we doing right now. Just saying. All right, so yeah, with this one, like it's completely different. Like it, it's some spice. It's like it's like wood. It's, it's cedar and spice. I mean, that's really what it is. And it, and it's something completely different from what my palate normally likes and shit. And that's why it's surprising to me that is it's so good. Like it's. It's weird almost, cause this is dead set against what I'm used to, or what I what I actually like. So shout out to uh, the Detroit City Distillery, dog. Um, shout out to my man Mike, one of the uh, master dis- distillers. Shout out to Stu for even introducing us. The homie Stu. Shout out to the my guy Stu. One. <laughs> no doubt, right? So that shout out to him. 
really the only white male Republican that I <laughs> like that's in my circle for real. <laughs> Yeah. Man, that's crazy as hell, ain't it? It is, though. That's crazy as hell. Shout out to my But I fuck Stu, with Stu, man. man. That's crazy, though, right? But Stu always been real with me. No doubt. Yeah, I fuck with Stu. So, yeah, shout out to Stu. Shout out to uh, my man, Mike Forsyth, uh, one of the Masters of Steelers. Shout out to his homeboy, man. I cannot think of the other Masters. Uh, it wasn't... I don't guess it was him. Because he called him by a nickname, though. You, you could so guess a hundred different wrong. names right now. Yeah. And I'd be like, I don't know. But he was fun, though. He yeah, was yeah, 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 yeah. And he's yeah. also the reason why Mike had to leave early. But <laughs> we'll talk about that on another show. <laughs> oh, where Mike go? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, we was in that picture like, damn, where he go? All right, it's cool. He dipped hard, man. Also, shout out to uh, shout out to Kylie and uh, and Libby, who are our, uh, our <laughs> impromptu friends and shit at the Detroit City Distillery. I think shout we Instagram buddies and shit. Yeah, we no, Instagram no, buddies. No, now. They thought they weren't. Photogenic, but you know they look good on video on, on photos. So I forget it. it. Whoever was sitting on this side, she's she's laughing her ass off, boy. Oh, Libby, yeah, she must have said some real funny shit. Yeah, she was laughing her ass off though. I, and I caught them in a natural state, so it was a good picture and shit. So shout out to y'all, Kylie and Libby, our new uh, Detroit City Distillery buddies. See, we do like white people. We like white people. <laughs> no, you stupid as hell. And we'll be down there soon to the Detroit City Distillery to uh, to take a, a tour. And after we have a few conversations with Mike, we may actually start recording down there. So uh, be on the lookout for that, man. Detroit City Distillery go be in the building. Um, so yeah, that's it for season one of uh, our season one episode one episode one of season, season three. There you Goddamn go. Goddamn butcher's cut got me fucked up. So three things we gotta do. Recreational mar- marijuana is legal in the state of Michigan. It certainly is. Which is say that that happened earlier too. Uh, so Butcher's Cut Whiskey, shout out to uh, to them, Detroit City Distillery. Also, a side note, shout out to uh, The Loft in Farmington, all right? So, Most definitely. Uh, shout out to Monique. And Monique, yes, I told you that we go get you on the show for a special cigar edition. That's going to oh, happen. yeah. So don't act like you. Black like on cigar joint, for real. For sure. That's what's up, baby, yes. And shout yes. out to Emperor's Cut. Emperor's Cut. <laughs> for sure, because yeah. uh, that's, a, that's a very... Uh, no, it's smooth and, and it's a long a smooth, smoke. And it's a long like, smoke. Like, yeah, like smooth, satisfying, like For cigar sure. smoke. Emperor's cut, black Emperor's on, cut. No doubt. smooth. You'll be in for a treat. No, you in for us. it. So if you smoke Trust cigars, us. do that shit, dog, for sure. All right, to the next time, man. You uh, already know what it is. Beers, bourbon, whiskey, man. Everybody loves BBW. <laughs> to the next time, dog. That's beers, bourbon, whiskey, by the way. <laughs> We up out of here, man. I got my man Bo in the building. I say. And of course, man, it's your boy Q Lewis. Holding it down live from the 48205, man. Peace out, y'all. I'll be back, though.